Hey, peace be unto you. It's uh, Aji, your brother on the bike. Uh, once again, uh, if you followed the first one leading up to this, you're going to see there's going to be a couple videos and they're all going to be kind of shot the same way, same style. Uh, but, and same time as I try to use my time as best I can. So, this one will be going over the 1500 mile over uh, 36 hours, essentially two days, uh, that I did. I left Orlando. And I, I uh, rode up to Nashville and met a breeder, um, which I'll be posting a video uh, of my time with the pups. Uh, met a breeder that we're going to work with for our uh, Vichla line. Uh, Vichla is going to be our staple dog, but we're also going to use rescues and stuff. Um, and, uh, and then from there, I left and went to... Uh, Lake Charles to meet up with another friend that was uh, enlisted with me uh, way back in the day uh, and hang out with, the, with my family. Uh, one of those families, you know, especially in the military, you kind of just get those people that end up being like kind of instant family and he was, him and his family are kind of instant family. So when I left Orlando, I left later than I wanted to uh, because the flight getting into Orlando uh, the night before didn't give me in until midnight when it was supposed to give me in originally at 6.30. So I didn't do my prep the night before uh, and I wanted to get a good night's sleep because I knew I was going to be trying to push it the next couple days. Um, so I waited a while. Uh, I also got up in the morning and went and got my, uh, uh, my disabled vet plate for my bike from uh, Florida and for my trailer uh, so that kind of slowed me down and then since I was doing it anyway I went and uh, mailed some stuff back home which uh, was part of the problem because uh, I mailed stuff home that I hadn't used uh, or hadn't used since the beginning which included my uh, this kind of like flannelly riding coat that my wife bought me which is kind of awesome it's a nice little light uh, coat uh, but still had the protection and stuff inside well I hadn't used this since the first day but leaving out of Orlando when it was 100 degrees and then getting up to Nashville at like 8 o'clock when it was 70 degrees, I really wish I had kept that jacket. Uh, there's a reason I packed it and I should have kept that. Uh, I also sent home another my gloves that I had done because I would bought a new pair of gloves. Uh, so I had sent back the other pair of gloves, two pairs of gloves that I had in there. Halfway up there, the gloves ripped right around the wrist. So, then I had to buy another pair of gloves. Uh, so now I have two extra sets, or I have another set, uh, which I wouldn't have had to do if I had just kept one of those two pairs. Uh, so there's a reason why you kind of bring stuff like that. And uh, if you have multiples, uh, it's one thing I should have sent, I should have sent home one of them, not both of them. Uh, I'm also one of those guys that rides, and I like to have the gauntlets, um, and, I bought a pair of breathable gloves. They didn't have gauntlets. Uh, and I wasn't really thinking about it. But uh, part of the reason why the gauntlets help is uh, I use the uh, just kind of wicking uh, shirts and stuff. And well, the <laughs> without the gauntlets, they just kind of blew up. So I ended up with these like weird drafts down my arms, especially as I got into the, into the hills. And they never wanted to stay up, um, which I didn't notice when I had the gauntlets on, but as soon as I didn't have the gauntlets on, now I notice. Um, so for a lot of us, whatever kind of preference of way that you ride, it's probably the way you should keep riding. Um, there's a reason why you developed it. Uh, and I had completely forgot, but now I remember. So now I have the new gloves I bought are not quite gauntlets, but they're close enough and they actually uh, grab the end of the, the wicking material and stuff so I kind of got the best of both worlds when it comes to that part um, on the way up uh, it was pretty easy on the way up it wasn't that bad other than leaving late uh, I didn't really catch any weather or anything the next day when I got up uh, because I left late I had originally planned to do 750 on each leg because I left late and I didn't want to be rude to the people that were kind of staying up so I could get there I only did 600 miles on the first day, which means I had to do the, you know, 
eight or it was like six fifty or something. So I had to do like eight fifty on the second leg, um, which was a lot more painful than I had meant for it to be. Um, in many ways, it kind of felt like I was doing another thousand mile in twenty four hour challenge, um, but just a little bit easier. Uh, so that was not too bad. I caught a little bit of rain on the way over there, but not that bad. Uh, the biggest thing was just there's when you have those kind of things planned out, try to split them up kind of evenly. Because, and if if you're gonna not split them up evenly, I highly recommend having the first day be the long day, not the second day. Because <laughs> I was already tired um, from the trip and spending time talking to the breeder and meeting all the pups and hanging out with them. Uh, and then, then I had to get on the bike and do an extra long day. So I highly recommend if you're gonna do that kind of thing and break it up in two that you do preferably as long as you can the first day and then have the second day be a shorter day. Um, the other thing is since it's 36 hours uh, to do what everybody else could do in probably 15 or 12, uh, feel free to take as many breaks as you want. Uh, I still kind of rush through and it made it a lot harder than it needed to be, uh, mainly because I was trying to get there before uh, people were going to sleep and the next day because I wanted to spend time with a friend I hadn't seen in a while. But I highly recommend taking those nice solid breaks. Uh, give your butt a little bit more time to rest, and give your body a little bit more time to recuperate. Um, and then that way when you get there, you know, you get to where you're going, sleep a good, you know, six to eight hours, and then get back on the road and you'll finish it easily. Um, even if you were not a uh, expeditious rider, which I kinda am, but if you're not an expeditious rider, it still makes it a little bit easier. And you can take uh, the two day 1500 mile challenge, honestly is easier than the thousand mile challenge because you know you break it up 750, 750. Um, so you can actually, but you still have about the same amount of time. Um, so, you can use this kind of one to actually kind of go on other tours. Uh, when you do the uh, 1500 mile in a day, which I just did, uh, you don't really have time to go and do long, like sweeping roads kind of thing. You just kind of got to get out there and go. Uh, otherwise, it's almost impossible to get done. So uh, you can kind of enjoy that one. Uh, and I, I would recommend it. I was originally going to try to do silver right off the bat. Um, and as it turned out, I didn't get to do it because uh, the, the breeder and their family uh, were a lot more accommodating than I expected or had planned. So uh, I went to bed a lot later than I had expected to. Um, and honestly, I was happy about it anyway because I got to hang out with the puppies a little bit more and hang out with the dogs more. And, you know, and, and it's always great to be around like-minded people. Uh, so I just enjoyed that part. Uh, which is why I say that you can spend more time on your breaks and you can go around and do a little bit more touring stuff um, and still get that done relatively easy. Uh, but I would make sure that you check out the weather. Uh, I did hit rain on the way up from Orlando to Nashville because I left late. And anybody who's ever lived in Florida knows that afternoon showers is just something that happens in the summer. Uh, and that's pretty much what I hit. Um, thankfully, I missed a lot of them. They were just barely off the highway or or if I did hit them, they kind of swept right through. Um, so I got fortunate that way. Um, so hopefully that kind of continues for the rest of my trip. Uh, but I'll get into that after I talk about the uh, one day 1500 mile challenge in the next one. Uh, so God willing, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, please like and share and subscribe. And look on, the, uh, look on for the next one one uh, going over the 24 hour 1500 mile challenge and uh, please if you have the time look over at, uh, on my GoFundMe page for PTS Dogs for Vets try to donate five dollars bring somebody else to bring donate five dollars because the goal is to try to build a facility and have the ability to provide every vet that wants a dog a dog and that's what we're going to do. So, thank you.